Too many nonprofit leaders are content with simply recruiting willing and interested individuals to serve as board members. Building a firm foundation for your organization means ensuring each member fully grasps and implements their responsibilities. Watch this video to discover the real responsibilities of a board. Stay tuned. For years, I worked with a board whose minimum requirements were $5,000 and that amount had never changed since its founding. A handful of couples came in at that amount in the 1970s and never increased even though the cost of living increased dramatically and their own financial situation improved considerably. Then a new board member joined who was used to giving large amounts of money to the group he and his wife served prior to joining this board. They initially started with $20,000 and increased a significant amount annually. This person became board chair and was asked to rewrite or update the board requirements. He immediately recommended that the minimum amount to become a board member would be raised to $25,000. It always seemed so awkward or self-serving for the nonprofit to ask board members to increase the amount, but when the board chair brought, it, brought up the idea, everyone else agreed. It all seemed so easy since they came up with the number themselves. Board members who never before considered getting others to give also agreed to do so as part of membership. This one board member re-energized the board and made a difference in giving for that organization. His establishment of requirements for board membership and even qualities to look for in a board member made a difference for that season. Too many nonprofit leaders are just so happy to have a warm body accept their invitation to be on the board that they will either waive or neglect to mention board responsibilities. If that's you, please learn to change as soon as possible. Having requirements for your board helps for two important reasons. Number one, it gives the board tracks to run on. And number two, a reason to exist. People appreciate knowing what's expected of them. Having requirements allows you as a nonprofit leader to be assured that you're not alone in this effort to fund your organization, that you have a board who has your back in these efforts. Here's the minimum requirements I would place on your board. Requirement number one, be available for counsel on organizational matters. A member must be available to use and provide expertise to the board and organizational leadership. Each board member has at least one or more gifts, talents, or skills that they hope to use. An effective nonprofit leader will recruit board members based on those attributes. If that was not the case for you, those attributes should be identified so that they may be used for the betterment of the whole. If a board member is gifted analytically or has a talent for numbers, perhaps they can serve as the board treasurer and oversee the reporting of financial statements from the organization's CFO, treasurer, or bookkeeper. Some board members have talents in marketing, finance, fundraising, human resources, or strategic planning. Strategies should be employed to utilize all those talents and skills to the fullest extent and specifically to help the organization. I like to recruit board members who have a business background or are entrepreneurs. Even though for-profit and non-profit are different, it's much easier to use business skills in the non-profit world than it is to try to use non-profit skills in the business world. Entrepreneurs especially understand the need to find seed capital through investors to get a business started and that uniquely qualifies them to help formulate a funding plan to present to donors. Requirement number two, attend board meetings and contribute to the discussion. Involvement in board meetings is critical for input evaluation and assistance in the overall organizational activities and in meeting the needs of the staff. Board members should attend as many board meetings as possible annually. A minimum percentage of board meetings should be established. For example, attend 80% of board meetings in a year. Of course, there's always extenuating circumstances like health or family emergencies that might require a board member to miss more than the required number of meetings, but simply being busy is not a good excuse. If someone misses too many meetings, they should, for the good of the organization, consider resigning. Regular attendance and contributing to discussions helps keep the board member engaged and maximizes their useful attributes. Requirement number three, be a financial partner to the organization. 
board members need to understand that in accordance with the bylaws of the organization and as a requirement, they have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure the financial soundness of the organization for which they serve. This is an important obligation to fulfill and should not be entered into lightly. And unfortunately, most board members only see this as ensuring that money that has already been raised is spent wisely and in accordance with the request of the donor, that there's no illegality or fraud. What many board members miss is that this includes ensuring that the proper amount of money needed to run the organization is secured and that they play a key role in seeing money raised. That key role starts with their giving. Some boards have agreed to a minimum amount that each board member must give each year, but I've found that the level of giving is not as important as the level of sacrifice. I call that not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. From some board members, 20,000 might be a huge stretch for them, and for others, 20,000 is what they tip their dog walker at Christmas. You'll want to help them determine that, that sacrifice point, either as a board or as an individual. At a minimum, a board should give 10% of the total budget of your organization and continue to grow as the organization grows. If you aren't there yet, consider working up to that point. Immediately going to 10% may be a real challenge for your board, but not giving anything should not be an option. In fact, many foundations are asking nonprofit applicants to list the board giving, and if one or more board members don't give, it sends a signal that giving isn't important to the board members or that the cause really isn't that valid. Other than possibly giving to their local church, your nonprofit should be their number one giving priority. If not, why not? If someone serves on multiple boards, it's impossible to have all the organizations be number one. They may have to choose this day who they will really serve. Requirement number four, generate new financial partners and cultivate existing partners. Going along with the fiduciary responsibilities to, to ensure that the organization is adequately or fully funded, individual giving is important, but so is helping to generate new financial partners to the organization and cultivate, that's keep, and increase, lift existing partners. Board members should be taught or coached to utilize and maximize their personal and business relationships so that opportunities can be taken to solicit gifts for individuals or couples. It shouldn't be expected that board members just know how to ask, but that they are taught to make an excellent appeal. And the board members are taught to thank and appreciate current partners. Bonus requirement. Regularly pray for the organization. For faith-based organizations, I recommend that board members commit to praying regularly for the nonprofit they serve. This is crucial both for the fruitfulness of the organization and for developing a sense of partnership. If your bylaws outline roles and responsibilities of board members, you might want to see if these match up with what I've given you. If they do, simply remind the board of their responsibilities. If not, you might consider circling back to make appropriate changes. If you've never had any requirements, begin to establish them immediately. In fact, use your board chair and consider getting the board to help you craft the requirements themselves. It might give them ownership, just like it did the board in my beginning story. If you feel that immediately implementing changes would be too divisive to place new requirements on an old board, then consider establishing requirements with new board members from that point forward. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you like best and wanted to start first. And if I missed anything valuable that you learned, share that with me in the comments so they can help our entire community get better. If you've never subscribed to this channel, please know there's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more the message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our, our collective experiences. Simply hit the big red subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. Consider sharing this video with a friend or a colleague. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.